Greetings friends and viewers. Today I'm going to show you how to build your own customized airfield. When you build an airfield you can use any materials you like. You can use concrete, you can use asphalt, or whatever material you choose to build a runway. In this episode I'm going to build a grass runway. I am currently near Maryville, Tennessee, right outside of the Great Smoky Mountains. And now I'm going to zoom down into the area in which I will work. What we're looking at is a grass runway, which is used for training for paragliding. There's also smaller aircraft that is used in this area. My viewer flies one of these planes here. I'm not 100% sure what you call this, but it looks like a lot of fun. And this is an actual picture of the runway. And I want to recreate this runway for my viewer. So to start off, I'm going to place my aircraft over in this location at this air park, and then I will simply move over to the area. With my aircraft placed at this air park, which is relatively close to the place I will be working, I'm now going to go into developers mode. I'll hit escape. I'll go to general options. I will go to Developers, On, Apply and Save. And now I'm going back to my plane by hitting Resume. With the Developer open, I'm going up to my Developer menu. I'm going to tick on Camera, tick on Developer Camera. And now I'm going to find the location in which I want to build the airfield. Now that I'm in the location, I'm going up to my Developer menu. I'm going to tick on Tools, Project Editor, bring up my Project Editor. I'm going to tick on Project, New Project. I'm going to give the project a name. They call this Cagley's Landing. And now I'm going to create New Project. The wizard wants to know what kind of project I want to create, so I'm going to tick on Airport and I'm going to type in the name. This will be displayed in the Content Manager. With the name entered, I'm going to hit Next. At this point in time, the simulator knows I am near an airport and it's wanting to overwrite the airport. I do not want to overwrite the airport, so I'm going to create a new airport. And now I'm going to ask it to generate an ICAO code. And now I'm going to create the airport. You will notice up in my inspector it's already placed the name. It's already placed my company name because I have it set as default down here in the project editor. I'm going to grab my thumbnail. And now I'm going to build the package. Modifications are detected and it's asking me if I want to overwrite and I'm going to click yes. And now the package is built. So I'm going back up to my developers menu. I'm going to window and turn off the console. And now I'm going to tick on my project name, Patriot 6 Airport. TN88, that's the ICAO code it gave it. I'm going down to Scenery, BGL, and tick. And now I'm going to tick on the inspector, Load and Editor. And I'm going to move around as my scenery library is filling in here. The scenery library has now populated. I'm going to go up to my Objects menu and change from scenery to runway. And I'm going to add the runway. I'm going to the gizmo and I'm going to reorientate this airfield to match 
the airfield that is here. I'm going to change the scale as best I can to match the area. With the runway scaled the way I want it to be scaled, I'm now going to go back to the gizmo to rotate and reorientate the airport to match this direction as best as possible. I believe that is close as I'm going to get it. I'm going down to my scenery editor. I'm going to tick on view and bring up properties. And here is my runway properties. And now I want to add a runway start. I'm going to edit the position. and move the start to where I want it. Now I'm going to reorientate the position of the start so the aircraft will spawn here and we want to take off this direction. I'm going to my gizmo, hit rotate. As far as I can tell, it looks pretty close. That is the direction the airplane will be setting. Now I'm going back to my properties and I'm going to select materials. On the materials, you can change the particular type of ground you want. I want to make this transparent. Now you might ask, why do I want to make this transparent? I want to make this transparent because I do not like how a grass airfield textures look. So I'm going to make this transparent and build my own texture. To build my texture, I'm going to build a polygon. Now I'm not going to walk through all the processes of building inclusion and exclusion polygons. I will link a video below that shows you exactly how to build polygons. So I want to go up to my objects menu and change from runway to polygon. And now I'm going to build a polygon for my grass material. And once a polygon is complete and I've set my last anchor point, I can double click. Now I want to select my polygon if I look at my scenery editor, I want to make sure Polygon is selected. I'm going to my material editor and I'm going to select a Sobo ground. And I'm going to find grass. I believe ground grass 2 is what I used. I'm going to hit apply. I'm going to bring up my properties again. I'm going to select this material that I have highlighted. And now the grass is there. I'm going to exit out the material editor. And now I'm going to work on the color of the grass. I'm going to take blue to 21. As you can tell, I've already experimented with these colors. I'm going to take red to 14. I'm going to take green to 45. Now that looks like a good color. I don't want this runway to have exact cutoff lines because I don't think it will look very realistic that way. So I'm going back to my project editor. I'm going to add 20 meters of fall off. Now you will notice once I added that, the grass 
moves out into here and it falls off and that looks more natural. So we have our grass texture. We have the runway and our start position set. To make this a little easier to locate, I'm going to add a landmark point of interest. And I'll move the landmark a little bit off from the airfield. I will go to objects and look for landmarks. I see landmark location. I'm going to tick on it. And I'm going to make sure that POI point of interest is highlighted on my objects menu. I'm going to click add. I'm going to move the POI a little bit off the runway. I'm going to properties and I'm going to name this point of interest. You may have noticed when I first added the point of interest, it showed an error here on my scenery editor. That is because I did not have the point of interest named. Now that I've given it a name, the error has gone away. And now I'm going to save my work by going down to the scenery editor and save scenery. I'm going back to my project editor and I'm going to make sure I'm ticked on Patriot 6 Airport. I don't want to be on scenery BGL. I want to be on this location here. And once again, my inspector illuminates and I'm going to build the package. package is built I'm going up to I'm going up to my developers menu window tick on console to remove the console everything is saved everything is built so I'm going to exit out of my tools and I'm going to pull my scenery folder over here and I'm going to bring in my community folder here is my community folder and here is my scenery folder, Kegley's Landing. So I want to open this. I'm going down to Packages. And here is my package. I'm going to copy this package. And I'm going to paste it in my community folder. And now I'm going to restart the sim. Sim restarted. I'm going to my world map. And now I'm going to zoom and find my location. Here near Maryville, Tennessee, I should find my point of interest. And there it is. Although I misspelled it, it should be Kegley's Landing. And here is the airfield. And now I'm going to spawn my plane on this airfield. And here we are, spawned exactly where I wanted the plane to spawn. You can see the runway. You can also see the trees are missing. When you build an airfield, it will remove vegetation. So I had to go back in and add the vegetation. I'm not going to attempt to take off from this location with a Cessna Citation Longitude. What I am going to do is click over to the package that I built for my viewer to let you see the extra work I did. This is not the only thing that I did. I did work on the house and the vegetation around the house, but I'll give you a look at what it looks like now. And then you'll see the finished product. First of all, you can see the house, how the house looks. And I want you to particularly pay attention to this location here. This is a driveway, but the artificial intelligence thinks this is a building. So that has to be fixed. Here is a small hangar where they keep things. But the artificial intelligence thinks that it's a building, so it spawned a building. And back here is another hangar that the artificial intelligence thinks is a building. 
you may also notice the entire yard is trees. So now I'm going to open up the project that I made for my viewer and let you see the additional work I did and how it turned out. And now I have loaded in the package that I built for my viewer. This package has more items in it than the tutorial package I just built, but I want to give you an idea of what I did for the viewer. You can see the grass runway. I put in a lot of effort on this fence row. The viewer did tell me there is a fence row down through here. There is fence rows available in the Asobo Scenery Library that I could repurpose, and I did, for this area. I improved the vegetation down along the runway to make it look as realistic as possible. You can still see the fence down through here. I added a windsock because there is a windsock in real life. In the standard scenery, this whole yard was covered with trees. But if you look at the aerial map, this yard is not covered with trees. So I used an exclusion polygon in this area to remove the vegetation and I manually placed trees in the yard where I could see the trees in the aerial imagery. I even went as far as adding a couple of pool chairs. These trees I added. The hangers I added because the artificial intelligence was generating a house here. So I went through my Sobo scenery and found a hanger that looked as close as possible to real life and placed it in the viewer's package. I worked on the tree line in this area because the trees were much higher than they are in real life. I added various vehicles to match as best I could what I was seeing in the aerial imagery. And overall, my viewer is really pleased with the finished product. I hope you learned something from this. And and once again, thank you for watching Patriot 6. I will continue to put these videos up to help you all in building scenery and improving your immersion in the sim. Thank you for watching Patriot 6.